Hello everyone, I am Dr. Zafar Meer. Today in this video, I am going to tell you about chi-square test of independence. I will try to answer the following questions um, like what it is, when it should be and how it should be applied using SPSS with an example. Before watching the full video, first subscribe the channel and press the bell icon for instant notifications. Okay, first of all, uh, I'm going to tell you about the purpose of the test. Uh, its purpose is to test the association between two attributes or variables. Or you can, uh, you can say that uh, it tests the independence of two attributes. For example, if we have two attributes, like one is gender and the other one is preferred teaching mod, uh, with two categories like uh, I just want to show you in the table yeah uh, we have one attribute gender with two uh, levels male and female and the other variable or the attribute is preferred teaching mod and its two levels are face to face and online tutoring okay this is called a contingency table okay and it is 2 cross 2. Why it is 2 cross 2? The first uh, number is the row, uh, row and the second number is for the column. Okay, we have two rows, one for male and the other one is for female. And we have two columns, one is for face to face and the other one is for online tutoring. Okay, these uh, C1, C2, C3 and C4 are called cell numbers uh, okay uh, next okay if you write the null hypothesis for uh, this independent test it can be written as for example uh, if uh, there are two uh, you know variable gender and preferences for teaching mode it can be written as gender and Preferences for teaching mods are independent of each other. This might be your null hypothesis or you can write it as male and female equally preferred online tutoring versus face to face mode of teaching. Okay. Uh, furthermore, uh, there are some properties uh, of, you know, chi-square test. What are they? Uh, the values of chi-square test cannot be negative. Uh, because it is based on sum of square differences between the obtained and ex expected results. Okay, uh, when you square the difference, it will always be positive. Okay, secondly, the chi-square distribution is positively skewed distribution and it is non-symmetric. The third one is the degree of freedom for chi-square can be calculated by using this formula, rho minus 1 and column minus one. Uh, this row and column can be recognized as in this table. Uh, we have two rows, this one, and two columns. One is for face to face and the other one is for online learning. Two rows and two columns. So whenever you want to calculate the degree of freedom for chi-square test of independence, uh, you just have to put out, uh, put here the values of rows and columns. If it is 2 cross 2, then it means uh, 2 minus 1 into 2 minus 1. If it is 2 cross 3, it means 2 minus 1 into 3 minus 1. So, okay, next. There are certain assumptions uh, when uh, this test can be used. Uh, okay. The first assumption, uh, these assumptions should be fulfilled uh, before applying the test. Okay, the data in the cells should be in frequencies or counts rather than percentages. It should be in natural numbers. Means that uh, these cells values should be whole numbers. Like it might be 7, it might be 10, maybe 10 males prefer face to face uh, or 20 uh, males preferred, for example, online tutoring. So the values written in these cells should be 
like the natural numbers okay the second one is the category of the variables are mutually exclusive for example gender has two mutually exclusive categories uh, male and female in this example uh, each subject in sample may contribute data to one and only one cell in this chi-square test it means that if a person is like if Asad is uh, our respondent then Asad may have only chance either he uh, select or preferred face-to-face -face mode or uh, he should prefer online tutoring so uh, it's uh, his frequency uh, may be included in one of these cells okay either in c1 or in c2 so the third assumption was uh, each subject in sample may contribute data to one and only one cell okay the fourth one is there are two variables and both are measured at nominal level or ordinal level in this example uh, we have um, two attributes gender and preferred teaching method uh, so uh, these are measured over here in nominal level male and female are two categories of the gender and again face to face and online tutoring are two categories of the preferred teaching modes okay so the categories should be either measured at the nominal level or the ordinal level the values of the cells should be at least five or more okay and in at least 80 percent of the cells uh, and no cells should have an expected frequency of less than one so if uh, the data you know covers all these assumptions you can apply independent uh, you know test of independence chi-square okay then we have certain uh, you know information regarding sample size for chi-square sample size should be large uh, no cells should have expected value less than one and no more than 20 percent of the cells have expected values count less than five uh, okay if an expected number is less than five you should use an alternative uh, alternative test such as fisher's exact test of independence uh, this test is a way to test the association between two categorical variables when you have small cell sizes uh, like expected values less than five uh, okay next uh, effect size for chi-square test mostly uh, phi coefficient and Kramer's v are used to find the effect size for chi-square test okay uh, now let's do the practical okay we have a file you know uh, you can see the variable view we have two variables like one is gender and the other is teaching uh, mod and i already assigned the values uh, one for male and two for female and okay i have already assigned the values for teaching mode as well uh, one for face to face and other one two for online tutoring okay and then uh, you can see that both these variables are measured at nominal levels okay now it's the data view well uh, go to analyze and uh, go to descriptive statistics and then click on cross tabs uh, well you can see these uh, you know uh, the chart you just place gender in the row box and the preferred teaching method into the column box and then we have certain tabs you know one is statistics click on it and then you can click chi-square and if the data is nominal then you can click phi and Kramer's v if the data is ordinal then you can select uh, you know out of these four anyone out of these four okay then click on continue and then cells in cells you need to you know check the observed count and then rows columns and total okay then continue okay you need to also check this box display 
clustered bar charts okay and press okay okay uh, what it shows it's just processing summary it shows that 100 respondents are there and first of all we have a cross tab table what it shows we have gender male and female in one side and the other side is preferred teaching mod face to face and online tutoring okay what it shows it shows that out of 50 males 25 males preferred face to face and 25 preferred online tutoring it means 50% uh, of the male preferred face to face mode of teaching and 50% of the males preferred uh, online tutoring okay uh, out of 50 females 26 females preferred online tutoring and 24 uh, females preferred face to face mode of teaching so 52% of females you know preferred online tutoring and 48% females preferred face to face mode of teaching okay when you see uh, the things uh, like this 49 uh, means 49 out of 100 males and female uh, respondents 49 respondents preferred face to face mode of teaching and 51 respondents preferred online tutoring uh, out of 49 24 females so it constitutes 49% uh, out of 49 means uh, face to face uh, females preferred face to face mode of teaching are 49 and male who preferred face to face mode of teaching are 51% Similarly, 51% uh, per, uh, you know, female preferred online tutoring and 49% uh, you know, male preferred online tutoring. So, okay, next. Uh, next is the chi-square test uh, table and here is the value of chi-square that is 0 0.040 and we uh, have no cells like uh, which I have expected count less than five so it's two cross two table and uh, p value is 0 0.841 okay um, what it shows uh, I just want to show another table like this one if the p value is greater than 0 0.05 percent level of significance it means uh, that uh, we fails to reject null hypothesis okay uh, so we can interpret it as there is no statistical significant association between gender and preferred teaching modes they are independent or you may say male and females equally prefer online tutoring versus face to face mode of teaching so in this case we fails to reject null hypothesis as p value that is point um, that is point 841 which is greater than uh, 0 0.05 uh, level of significance 5% level of significance so we fails to reject null hypothesis it means males and female are equally preferred uh, both you know face to face mode of teaching versus online tutoring so the value of phi that is 0 0.020 and uh, you know kramer's value 0 0.020 also shows a very weak uh, you know association between the attributes okay this bar chart also shows that males and females equally prefer uh, face to face and online tutoring methods so this is how we can interpret you know chi square test of independence i think uh, you have learned uh, 